All right, we are on chapter 15, slide 24. Uh, we are introducing an idea called an ice table, where essentially we're going to um, build a table where we can enter data about a reaction. And using that table, we can figure out some value that we don't know. Um, this is going to be a mathematical approach to chemical reactions. Um, so call it an ice table. Essentially what we're doing here is we are tabulating our data, um, specifically when we set up a reaction, we're going to put in an initial amount of our samples. Usually, it's, we take reactant molecule, uh, you know, a certain amount of reactants, mix them together in a container. We know the reaction is going to shift toward the products, but in an equilibrium situation, it's a little bit more challenging than what we've done before to actually predict how much of a product is going to form. So by setting up this table, it's going to help us have a systematic approach to solving for the values. Okay, so we're going to have the initial values, we're going to have the equilibrium values that we reach um, at the end, and in between we have the change in the value, um, so that's our ICE for the ice table. Um, specifically, the ratios and the balance equation are going to be important here, so make sure we're paying attention to that. And um, finally, there are going to be times where we can use all this information to solve for the equilibrium constant. There will be other times where we have the equilibrium constant, and it's going to help us solve for one of the values in the table. So an example, we start with a, we're doing a reaction of hydrogen gas with iodine gas to form HI. So we have the initial concentration, meaning we mix together 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3 molar hydrogen gas and 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar iodine gas. We put them in a container, we close the container, and make sh and let it react. We know this is going to reach equilibrium, where the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are going to both be moving at the same rates. At that point, the concentration of all the different things in the container are going to stabilize, and then we could calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Okay. While they do that, they allow it to go to equilibrium. Concentration HI ends up being, once it reaches equilibrium, 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Based on all that information, we should be able to solve for what Kc is. Okay. Now, again, the way we set this up, we have to write our reaction out, and then we're going to set up an ice table where in the first row across, we're going to put the initial amounts of each thing that we have. In the middle row, we're going to tell how much each one changes, and they could be going up or going down. So in the change row, we're going to have one side will be subtraction, the other side will be addition to represent the changes that are occurring. And then finally, the equilibrium row at the bottom tells me what I end up with of each thing. Okay, now, in this table, you're going to fill it out. I didn't put the data into the slide. Uh, I'm going to put my initial hydrogen, the 1.00 times 10 minus 3, in the initial hydrogen spot right here. I'm going to put the initial iodine number right here. And then when I start the reaction, it doesn't mention the presence of any product. Normally, the product won't be there initially because when I set up reactions, usually I go get the reactants, I mix them together, I form products later. Okay, So before the reaction occurs, the amount of product, HI, is going to be zero. Okay? So I know the entire top row. Now, <coughs> HI tells me, tells me the equilibrium concentration so the concentration that the HI reaches when it levels off, 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3, that number is going to go in the bottom row under HI right here. Now, if I know that this is 0 here, and I know it's 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 right here, then that tells me that the change, I, I went from 0 to that number, so that means I added 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 for this spot right here. Now, when I make... HI, that can only happen by using H2 and I2. So whatever I've added in the change row under the product, I'm going to lose a proportional amount of my reactants. Now when I say it's proportional, it's proportional based on the ratio in the balance equation. For every two HIs that I make, I'm going to use one H2. So that's got to be a 2 to 1 ratio that will be represented in the change row. 
in the chained row, we're going to match the stoichiometry of the reaction. So right here, we said it's 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3. That number is twice as big as what I should put in hydrogen. So if you do 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3, divide by 2, that's the number that should go here. And then also, hydrogen and iodine are reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the number I put here, every time I use one of these, I'm going to use the same number of iodine. So these two numbers are the same, and they should be half of the number that's here. Now the other difference, the product is being added, the reactants are being subtracted. So make sure you're subtracting these two. Once I have those numbers, you should have the initial number written here, you should have the change written here, and it was a subtraction. So if I do this number minus this number, it allows me to get the equilibrium value. I can do the same thing under iodine, initial minus change, to get the final value. Once I have the three final values, once I have these numbers, then I should be able to set up the equilibrium expression, K equals the products over the reactants. Just remember that the HI should be squared. Okay? But I'm going to take my equilibrium value of HI, it's going to go on top of the expression and be squared. And then my two reactant concentrations are going to go in the bottom. And remember when two things are in the bottom, they're going to be multiplied by each other. Okay? That's it. If you solve that, I don't know what it comes out to be. I don't have it on the slide, but you should be able to figure that out. Um, I may stick it back in the slide later. All right, next problem. This time I have same reaction going on. H2 plus I2 yields two HIs. Um, I'm going to put in, so again, I'm going to set up an ice table. So initial change equilibrium, ICE is how we usually label it. When I set one of those up, I'm singing ice, ice baby from vanilla ice every time. So I set up that table. Again, it gives me an initial amounts. So now, uh, Typically, ice tables are written with molarity values. So if they give you moles, you need to divide by the volume to get the molarity. Those are the values that we plug into the table. Okay? So in this case, I have one mole of hydrogen in a one liter flask. Well, one mole over one liter is one molar. So my initial H2 value is going to be one molar. My initial I2 value will be two divided by one, which is two molar. My initial HI... It doesn't indicate that there's any HI there initially, so the initial product is going to be zero. Most of the time, that's how that works out. Um, this time, my change, I don't know the numbers. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do, if I don't know, I don't have, I don't know the change numbers or the equilibrium numbers, I'm going to have to plug in a variable. Okay, I'm going to call it x. The amount of H2 that reacts is going to be x. So. It'll be one in the initial value. I know I'm gonna lose some of it, so I'm gonna say minus X in the change value. Iodine will be the same thing. It'll be two molar in the first value, but I lose, for every one of these I lose, which we said that was X, I'm gonna lose an equal number of I2. So that one will also be X. Under HI, I start with zero. But every time I, make, I use one of these, I'm going to make two HIs. So if I'm losing X here, I'm going to gain twice as much under HI. So the change under HI is going to be 2X. Again, X to 2X to represent the 1 to 2 ratio. At that point, then my equilibrium under H2 will be 1 minus X, which the equilibrium will say, in parentheses, just say 1 minus X. Under I2, it'll be 2 minus X, in parentheses, for the equilibrium. And under HI, it'll be 0 plus 2X, which is 2X under HI in the equilibrium row. So, if I take that ice table that I just described, the equilibrium row is the one that sets up the, uh, um, the expression then I know my expression, Kc, equals the products over the reactants. Just remember that I, Hi should be squared again. I'm now going to take under Hi, my equilibrium value that I said was 2x, so that goes in the Hi spot. 
the H2 was 1 minus X, the I2 was 2 minus X. At that point, I've got an expression here that if I can solve for X, then that's going to allow me to figure out all the values. Okay, now one more thing in the uh, problem. It, this time, it gave me the value of K. Again, I can only solve for one unknown at a time. So on the first problem we did, we knew all the concentrations and we were solving for K. This time I don't know all the concentrations, so they had to give me K, right? There's only, uh, the information that's provided can change on every problem. So, I set this up. Essentially, I'm gonna have to do 2X squared, so that's gonna end up being, I square the two and square the X. So on top, it's gonna be 4X squared. On the bottom, I'm gonna have to foil this out. So, one times two is the first number. One times minus X is the second one. Negative X times two is the third one, that's F-O-I-L. And then negative X times negative X gives me the fourth one. Combine all that. This is just normal algebra. Then we have to combine all our terms. And honestly, when we have an X squared term and an X term and then a non-X value, we're gonna have to set up the quadratic formula where we have to move all, like we have to rearrange solve everything to one side. We have to have zero equals the x squared term and the x term and the non-x term. Um, and then we do the quadratic equation. Once you do that, quadratic equation always gives two answers for x. Only one of them is reasonable. Okay, so when you solve it, you should get the x equals 2.323 or x equals 0.935. Only one of those values can be correct. So if I go to the next slide, we know that from our ice table under hydrogen, we said the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen was one minus X. Well, if our X value was 2.323, if I did one minus 2.323, that's gonna give me a negative answer. Remember, we're talking about concentrations here. A concentration can't be negative. So our general rule, and then that means uh, the other X value has to be the right one. So the correct X value should be the 0.935. Now our general rule is that when you solve for the two X values, if one of them is bigger than it can be in terms of that makes sense in your equation, that's the one that gets thrown out. Or if one of the values comes out to be negative, that's the one that gets thrown out. So if it's less than zero or more than the maximum allowed value, those are the ones that get thrown out. Only one of the numbers is going to make sense based on the table and how it's set up. All right, now, once we've solved for it, we know that X is 0.935. Now I can go back to my table. I can plug the value of X into the equilibrium concentrations. So we said the hydrogen is supposed to be 1 minus X at equilibrium. So if I do 1 minus 0.935, gives me that the hydrogen concentration ends up being 0.065. So that's how much hydrogen will be in the container at equilibrium. For I2, it'll be 2 minus 0.935 to give 1.065. And then for HI, HI's concentration ends up being 2x. So 2 times 0.935 to get that one. So again, just the very end, I solve for x. Then I have to go back and look at my table and see what concentration that gives me for each component of the reaction. All right, now, most of the time when we start a reaction, we're going to assume that, like, if I mix together the reactants, close the container, let it go. So most of the time, the product values are going to start out at zero. Okay? That's not always going to be true, though. There will be cases where, let's just say you walk up and a reaction's already going, so there's going to be some reactants and products already present in the container, and we want to know, is it at equilibrium already, or does it still need to react some more to get to equilibrium? Okay, so to determine that, we're going to calculate a different value called Q. Now, Q... The setup is just like K, where K equals the products of reactants. Q follows the same formula, but if we don't know if we're at equilibrium, we, if I plug in just any random set of numbers that are given in the problem, 
and I'm not sure if it's at equilibrium or not, I'm going to plug in the numbers that are given, solve for the answer, which will be Q, and I'm going to compare Q to K to decide whether the reaction is, is, is at equilibrium, which is when Q would equal K, or if Q is less than K, then that means the reaction will shift one way. If Q is greater than K, it means it will shift the other way. Okay, so let's talk through that. So Q is set up just like the equilibrium constant. K equals products of reactants. Q also equals products of reactants. Same setup, okay? But we're going to plug in whatever current conditions we have at the point where we look at it, okay? So we've got a reaction going. We don't know if it's at equilibrium or not. So we just take the concentrations we have, we plug them in, and we just get a value. That random value, that's what Q is. So the initial concentrations, the ones that were given when we start, but that doesn't mean the reaction just started. It's whatever we have at a given moment. We plug those numbers in, and we get the value. That's our Q. Then we compare what Q is to K, and that's going to help us decide which way the reaction is going to go. Now, let's remember, K is like the ideal ratio of products to reactants. When, based on the stability there, uh, of the reactants to products, there's a preferred ratio of products to reactants that the reaction wants to achieve. If we have any ratio other than that, then it's not the ideal ratio. So the reaction is going to shift to either take some reactants and make more products or take some products to make more reactants. Whichever way it needs to go to get to that ideal ratio, that's what it's going to do. Okay, so if we solve for Q, if Q is less than K, so again, just numerically, if Q is a smaller number and K is a bigger number, if K is a bigger number, that means I, I need a ratio where I have more products and less reactants. If Q is smaller, it means I need to make some more products. I need to make the numerator bigger and the reactant smaller in order to get to that right ratio. So anytime Q is less than K, the reaction is going to have to move toward the right and make more products to increase the ratio and get it to the right ratio, which is what K is. If Q is greater than K, that means the ratio of products to reactants is too high. That means my numerator is too big. It means I have too many products. At that point, the reaction has to shift back to the left to reduce the ratio, because remember, K is my ideal. I always want to shift the reaction so that Q will move towards K. If Q is too big, I need to make it smaller. To make it smaller, I'm going to have to take some of the products and shift, turn them into reactants, which means the reaction is going to move toward the left side, which means the reverse reaction is going to speed up. The forward reaction would slow down until it gets to the right ratio, then it would level back off again. Third possibility, though, if you plug in the values that are given, and if Q equals K, then that means, oh, we are, we're already at equilibrium. Nothing's going to happen. The reaction will keep going, but it's already balanced. It's just going to stay at the same ratio forever. So, again, rewording. Nature always wants Q to equal K. The reaction will shift whichever way it has to in order to achieve that. So when Q is less than K, the reaction is going to shift to the right to make more products. If Q equals K, then it's going to stay right where it is. And if Q is greater than K, then the reaction is going to shift back to the left to make more reactants. Another representation of the same idea. Can, you just kind of have to get in your head how you're going to think about this. If you put a number line from 0 to infinity, K is just some random value that represents the ideal ratio of products to reactants. When I take Q, if Q is less than K, it's going to be over here between 0 and K. So if Q is too small, it'll be on this side. So then Q, in order to get to K, it has to move to the right. On the other hand, if you solve for Q and it's a really big number, 
bigger than k, that means I'm above k in value, so I'm closer to infinity. Then if q is large, it has to shift back to the left to get to k. So it's just a different representation of the same idea. It doesn't matter how you remember this. You just make, need to make sure you can figure it out. All right. So another example. If I have a reaction, A plus B yields C plus D, K for the reaction is given to be 2.5. That's the ideal ratio of products to reactants. If I mix together all the reactants and products, make the, all of them one molar, which way will the reaction go? So all I do there, I set up the expression, K equals the products of the reactants. So A times, oh, excuse me, C times D over A times B. I plug in the initial values that are given, which is going to be C and D are 1 times 1, over A and B are also 1 times 1. So if I just plug in random values into the equilibrium expression, the answer is going to be Q. So 1 times 1 over 1 times 1, Q equals 1. So the current conditions, the current ratio is 1 to 1. Ideally, we want the ratio to be 2.5. So right now, Q is less than K. Q is 1, K is 2.5. If Q is less than K, then that means that the reaction needs to shift to the right to make more products so that Q can get to K. The reaction is going to shift to increase the value of Q until it equals K. So, I could even set up an ice table at that point. Again, we'll do that in a later problem where I, my initial rows would be, the initial row would be one, 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 one. Once I decide I'm gonna to shift to the right, that means I'm gonna to add to the product side, plus X, plus X. On the left side, I'm gonna use reactants to make products. So the reactant side, I'm gonna subtract. So the ice table here would be the initials all ones, under A and B, it'd be minus X, minus X. Under C and D, it'd be plus X, plus X. And then I could figure out my, my equilibrium values. I could set up, probably do the quadratic equation to solve for X, um, and then figure out what the equilibrium concentrations were, if it asked me to. This problem didn't ask me to do all that, but that's kind of the ultimate goal, is we look at the current concentrations, we decide which way it's going to go, and then we're going to apply that to the ice table when we set up the ice table. Okay, that's a good place to cut off for now. We'll do another video later.